is Nick, and we're here to play some magic today. We will be having a quick look at Magic the Gathering, Magic Arena, how to get started on, well, either, both, and then play through some of the tutorial. I think that sounds like a good idea for today. How are you? Hope you're all doing well in the middle of this coronavirus outbreak that we're all living through. If you haven't played Magic the Gathering, I highly recommend it as a way of getting through these troubled times. It's a phenomenal game. You can spend hours, days, weeks, months playing this and not even scratch the surface of the game. It's like an onion. The more you cut through it, the more, the more layers there are. Some of those layers are eye-watering. It's great fun, very versatile game. You can go in pretty much any game night recipe that you want to come up with. And I am going off on a massive tangent. What is Magic the Gathering? If you've ever played Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh, any collectible card game really, you've played a form of Magic the Gathering, really. These games all origin these games all came from Magic the Gathering, which started about 21, 22 years ago. It's now got more than 20,000 cards in it. it. As I say, it can be quite a complicated game. It is, however, the best game ever created, without a shadow of a doubt. If you sit through the tutorial with us today, you'll probably begin to see why. Um, first things first, Magic Arena is available on PC only, as up here. PC only at the moment. It will be coming to Mac later in 2020, but we don't know when. It will be coming to mobile later in 2020, but we don't know when. And although we've asked for it to come to console at some point, who knows when Hasbro will get around to releasing that. It's worth noting that Magic Arena could be quite buggy at times. Hasbro Wizards of the Coast aren't the greatest at patching these bugs. But they're not so much of an issue that it's not worth playing at all. Well, what I will say, as a final point before jumping in, is if you're considering starting to play Magic Online and you've come across the game Magic Online, or MitGo as it's also known, MTGO, um, don't do it. Play Arena first, get used to the basics, and then if you really want to play Magic Online, go for it. There's a lot more to Magic Online than there is Arena, but it's way more complicated. It looks absolutely terrible, like as good as this background you can see behind me, but worse. Honestly, it looks like something out of Windows 97. It's hard to look at. Um, but it is where you'll find the best players in the world playing the most complex games in the world. So, yeah, weigh it all up. Let's jump into arena itself you can download the arena client just by going to google and searching for download magic arena it's really easy to find they couldn't make it any easier if they tried and um, that's pretty much all you've got to do download the game let it update it'll probably take a while because it's quite a large game in terms of um In terms of downloads and updates, but it's worth it when you get there. Updates, the fun. interface that you can see at the moment is a bit more complicated than what you'll get when you start playing, but don't worry about that. We're just going to jump into the tutorial and have a play. We can look at all of these game modes and stuff once we're done. Uh, let's just make sure of this. You can actually hear me here. Let's turn that right down. Cool. Alright. Let's find the tutorial. Good to see you again. This little navvy style bug that you can see at the bottom here can be a bit annoying at times, but he's only here for the tutorial, so bear with. It's not as bad as it seems. Um replay tutorial.
there are, if memory serves, five levels to this, and then you can jump in as a fully fledged, fully fledged magic player. Um, Wake up! Wake up! Whew, looks like you barely survived your last battle, but with some training, you'll become a force to be reckoned with. Let's get started. This is what Magic Arena looks like for the most part. The elves of Lanawar are impressive warriors. Perhaps one of them will help us practice. Hopefully the forest so. belongs to the elves. Hmm. She seems like an enthusiastic teacher. That you she need does. To draw mana from lands to cast your spells. This back and forth that you can see going here isn't actually part of the main game. It's just here to give you a bit of flavour to what it is that we're doing. There are five colours of magic. The chances are this is going to be just a mono white against a mono green deck. We'll come on to the five colours in a bit, don't worry. So you've got your lands and you've got your creatures. These are your two predominant types of cards. Your lands you use as currency to pay for your creatures. So let's drag in, drag in one of our planes. You don't have enough lands to cast anything yet. So that's all you can do right now. Yep. You can see here that this card costs two of these little sun symbols, which is the symbol for planes for white mana. Play another land so you can summon a creature. You can play one mana, one uh, land per turn. Each land gives you one mana. As you can see here, we're tapping the planes to create two mana to cast our Shrine Keeper. So, you can either tap these manually you would be able to in the main game or you can just drag and drop which is the easiest way of doing this so creatures that have entered the battle that turn have you summoning sickness fight for you. see this is summoning sick there on the right hand side they can't attack on their first turn Going a bit fast here. You saw there, hopefully, at the end that our lands untapped at the end of the turn. So we can cast this one for the two mana that we had there. Play another land for the turn. Yep. You can see here that this one looks normal, whereas this has got a bit of a halo effect to it at the moment. That pulsating weirdness. That's the summoning sickness. So by tapping our creature, sending it into the attack zone, just pushing it forward a little bit if you're playing with um, paper cards, we can attack our opponent. Opponent here has 8 life, we have 7. The aim of the game here is to get your opponent to 0 before you get to 0. First one to 0 loses. So, in we go. Combat Maths. This is a 2-2. Two, two. You can see here that it's got 2 attack, 2 defense. Um, You're going to pay for that. I'm sure we will. The power, that first two, is how much damage it can deal. Now the second two. To inspect their details. Thanks, Navi. Um, the second two is how much damage it can take before it dies. Damage doesn't carry over um, over different turns like it does with some card games. Um, in Magic, at the end of your turn, all damage is removed and it goes back up to normal. So at the moment, if we were to attack this 2-2 into this 2-2, we would do 2 damage, this first 2, to their 2 over here. Um, the Treetop Warden would die because its toughness goes to 0, but it would do 2 damage to our 2 toughness, and our Shrine Keeper would die. Play out our Lots of them on Lion Breaker, Keep pressing the attack. and send it all in. Ah, you've been blocked. Yeah, the opponent decides how they want to block, if they want to block. They can choose not to, they can choose to block. It's entirely up to them. You can see what I mean there about the two damage going to each creature. They attack and block at the same time, unless otherwise stated. You come across cards as you play that change how the maths is done. Admirable. Pity I have to crush you. But we'll get there in due course. 
There we go. Opponent is costing a 4 4. Problem. It's bigger than what we have here at the moment. So we can play our land for the turn. Will indeed. So we're going to choose not to attack because if we were to attack, this 4 damage would easily kill either of our creatures with 2 toughness, and neither of our creatures would be able to do enough damage to kill the Rumbling Baloth, which can take 4 points of damage before it dies. So we're not going to attack, we're just going to pass the turn. You've shown spirit, but I will show you strength. Right. This presents a problem. You can see here that it can now do 8 damage to our 7 life and potentially kill us. However, if we send one of our creatures under the bus, as it were, make our Shrine Keeper jump in the way, we won't take any damage at all. There you go. The problem here... Put down that beast while it's still recovering. Yeah. Now that that's attacked, you can see it's been tapped like the mana gets tapped when you, um, when you cast a spell. Which means, importantly, that it can't block so if we were to attack here, we would be able to do 3 points of damage without any risk of losing our creature in the process to this uh, Rumbling Baloth. We have drawn a card that allows us to destroy a target tab creature, so why not? There we go. You're not making this easy. We're not trying, Kylia. Right. <laughs> We've got you cornered. Cast the spell. Clear a path to finish her. Tap all creatures, your opponent's control with toughness two or less. Sounds like a brilliant idea. And there you go, there's a path to victory. Send it all in. Well Do the damage. Outsider. Sorted. As you can see, it's not the most complicated game in the world at face uh, at a base level. When all of the creatures are vanilla creatures, so they don't have any text on them. It's pretty easy. Creatures often have text coming with them, though, that slightly change the rules of the game. In this case, it gives you four extra life, which is great. But some other creatures do things like making your, creature, yeah, your other creatures more powerful, less powerful, etc. But if you're going to battle another planeswalker, you've got to be prepared for anything. I know a guy on Ravnica that can teach you everything you need to know about tactics. Especially what not to do. So that raises an interesting point. What are Planeswalkers and where is Ravnica? In Magic the Gathering, you are a special type of wizard called a Planeswalker. A Planeswalker can walk the planes. Each plane is a universe or a plane of reality. Planeswalkers can jump between them however, whenever they want, for the most part. And this is more story than cards here, although you do get a type of card called a Planeswalker. Although you are a Planeswalker, there are Planeswalkers on top of that, which just serves to complicate everything. Um, sorry about that. Just serves to complicate everything. Ravnica is one of the planes of the universe, or multiverse, sorry, one of the planes of the multiverse, which is an entire cityscape cover to cover. It's also one of the best and most interesting planes in the game. Definitely one of the most popular. Um, so we're going to play this here goblin opponent, which should be a mono red deck. If I remember my tutorials. Mirabug. Surprise attack! Haste. Haste. Is Creatures with haste don't experience summoning sickness, which means that they can attack or tap yes. themselves. First blood. Congratulations. Oh. On the turn that they come don't in. Don't worry. These things are basically harmless. Up to a point, yes, they are basically harmless. Oh. Oh. 
problem is that they are generally quite cheap and can attack in large numbers like this. Do a lot of damage very quickly. So, we mentioned before the five colours of magic. We played white and green before. White is all about life and society and healing and religion and faith, all of that. Green is all about nature, the natural world, etc. Red is all about aggro. So, you can see they've already got three creatures down on turn two and are trying to bludgeon the heck out of us. We are going to block that one there in the middle. Because why not? I've got more where that came from. I don't doubt that. As mentioned before, heals up at the end of the turn. Happy days. Alright. Play a land, play a shrine keeper, and then we can chuck down a sanctuary cat too. Your creatures aren't tough enough to survive being blocked. They are not, which is why we're not going Hold to attack. Back. No attacks. Everybody but me. Charge! You don't have these witty one-liners in the main game, but they do still amuse me. All right, we can block one for one like this if we want to, which will ensure that we don't take any damage. But there's probably a better way of doing this in that you can actually block multiple creatures at a time with, you can block one creature with multiple of your creatures at a time. So if we block our, 1-1 one, one here with our 1-2. Our 1 point of damage will do 1 point of damage to the goblin. Goblin will die. It will do 1 point of damage to our 2 toughness sanctuary cat. Our cat won't die. We can also put both of our shrine keepers in the way of this goblin bruiser, which will do 3 damage as the opponent chooses between our 2 here and our 2 here. And we will do 2 plus 2, 4 damage to its three toughness, meaning that the Goblin Bruiser will die and one of our Shrine Keepers will die. But we take out the biggest creature on the board, which means that we will be standing a slight advantage. We'll take one point of damage, but that's not the end of the world. Block like that. Hey, nobody kills my troops but me! Wait, huh? And there you go. Suddenly we have an advantage again. I love Goblin Grenade. Alright. So the opponent has cleared the board. And we can just attack in with impunity. It's a good question. Oh, here it is. As mentioned before, some cards bring in some more complicated rules. So, Goblin Gang Leader, 4 mana. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 red Goblin Creature tokens. You can tell it's a token because it's got this weird domey top thing. That makes a difference um, in terms of rules that we'll come on to later on. But... You can see it's a token because it says token and because it looks different to most of the other types of cards. We'll grab our four life back because we can do with some life. He'd be a fool to attack you now. Yep. We're gonna attack in with our tutu because they'll probably trade here and kill each other. If we'd attacked in with the sanctuary cap. Never hold back. Never back down. Never walk barefoot in a goblin war in. All good ideas. If we'd attacked our 1-2 into his 2-2, two -two, our 1-2 would have died, but his 2-2 two -two wouldn't. So, you've got to know when to hold back. That is a big mm, creature. This is going to hurt. And it's going to hit us with 3 damage in the process. That's fine. Let's have another 4 life. Attack in with our 3-4, because it's big enough to kill the Painbringer and leave one of the three fours back so that we can trade it off along the way. When beat. So you should probably give up now. Hmm. Have mercy 
on me, please. You can attack in, but oh, no. it's the yeah. pokey bits that hurt the most. There was a chance he could have cast something to save himself, but we didn't know what card he had in his hand. And we're still on the tutorial, so I'm guessing they're going to go easy on us, by and large. Alright, so we've seen three colours now. We've seen white, red, and green. Get another couple of cards to add to our collection. You're a quick learner, so let's try a more challenging lesson. Go for it. Follow me to Ixalan. There's a mystic there who spent his life studying the nuances of combat. Sounds good. Ixalan is another plane of the multiverse. Unlike Ravnica, which is all cityscapes, Ixalan is a world of dense jungles. It's the game. It's the plane that brought dinosaurs into the game. There's also um, conquistador vampires, which are fun. Pirates and uh, merfolk are the other big tribe. The merfolk on Ixalan are green and blue. So the question here is, are we going to see just green, just blue, or a green blue deck? Because you can put whatever color combinations you want together to build like any other merfolk, but his knowledge is boundless. more powerful Stay decks. Patient and keep an open mind. If it is wisdom you seek, I will teach you. So we're starting off with blue. Birds fly freely, unfettered by earthly bonds. When talking to people about Magic the Gathering, they will frequently tell you that Island is the most powerful card in the game. The reason for that is because Islands let you cast blue spells, and blue spells are generally the most powerful ones in the game. So we've had white is about religion, faith, power, community, etc., etc. Red is about passion. Feelings, emotion, violence, aggression, etc., etc. Green is big dumb creatures, nature, dinosaurs, all of that nonsense. Blue is knowledge, um, knowledge, a bit of power, but with power comes knowledge, and occasionally flying. So. You can see here this is floating a little bit above the battlefield. The reason for that is... is connected. You must understand the air, land, and sea. Up until this point, everything's been attacking at a ground level, just bumping into each other along the way. That uh, bird can fly over any blockers on the ground. Yep. So we've got our ground level stuff, and it's got this flyer. We can try and block it, but no matter how you try and jump up, you're never going to be able to block a bird if the bird doesn't want to come to your level. It's a pretty simple concept, um, by and large. Right, enchantments. Good. This is a new type of card. Paying attention. Enchantments allow you to enchant your creature, opponent's creatures, the battlefield around you. These stick around. Um, for as long as they have, if it's an aura, as long as it's attached to a creature, or if it's just a normal enchantment, it sits on the corner of the battlefield and just hangs around until it has a reason to disappear. Either you sacrifice it, the opponent destroys it, something along those lines. In this case, the uh, enchanted creature, our cat, gets plus two, plus two. So it was previously a one, two, give it plus two, plus two, it becomes a three, four. Attack in, do a bit of damage. Obstacles may block your path, but do not lose sight of your true goal. Is the magic a crab the, wearing a pirate hat? is wearing a pirate hat. The art on magic cards is one of my favourite things about the game. The artwork is phenomenal. If you like the artwork, I suggest going to a website called Scryfall, where you can get high resolution versions of all of these cards. Um, you can view the artwork in glorious high definition. A lot of time and effort goes into these bits of artwork. Um, some, it depends entirely on the artist. I'm going off on a tangent here. It depends entirely on the artist how they want to do the art. They can paint it, they can draw it, they can 
do collages, they can paint it on the computer. Pretty much anything goes as long as the art director at Magic is happy with how they're doing it. Um, some of the canvases that people paint on are like three meters by two meters, absolutely massive. And then they sell the artwork on to anybody that wants to buy them, or you can buy prints, reprints from the artists themselves so that they can make a little bit more money on the side. It's a great, great thing to do. Unfortunately, I'm poor. I can't afford to buy magic artwork. Alright, we can attack into this, but it will just straight up block with this four toughness creature, so we won't do any damage. So instead, we're going to hold it back. Battles just. Ebb and flow. Yeah, they do. Alright. Water Knight is a good card. Keep going. He's running out of cards. Yep. So, um, tap Enchanted Creature, which is our line breaker in this case. It doesn't untap during this controller's untap step, which is the first part of your turn. Um, let's play out another card. Make our Sanctuary Cat even bigger. It's now 5 6. All attack. Off we go. So it's the beginning of his turn now. You saw he's untapped his lands. If you keep to the shallows, you'll never learn the secrets of the depths. Wow. Wise. That sounds deep. All right. The phases of the turn you can actually see it at the bottom of the screen here. Our beginning step there was where we untapped our lands drew a card. We're now in what's called your main one, or your pre-combat main phase, where you can play cards, play creatures, play spells that will interact with the board kind of thing, uh, draw you cards, etc, etc. When you're ready, you can go to combat. We're now in the combat step. This is where we can attack, block, whatever. Do a bit of damage. We move to our post combat main phase or your main two. Cast whatever creatures, spells, whatever you want. And then it moves to the end of the turn automatically in this. If you make big waves, do not blame the ocean when you get carried away. His lessons are just so majestic. Sure. All right. So this is a good card here. You can see they've got a load of blockers on the ground. If we were to attack in with our creatures, we wouldn't really be able to do much. And given that we're only on nine health, nine's quite a lot, but if he keeps attacking you with two in the air every turn, he'll have us dead in five turns time. However, he's only on two life. If we give our big old 5-6 flying, it can fly straight over the top, attack on in, easy win. It was fun while it lasted. And then he blows up, because that's how things work on Magic Arena. Win some more cards, instant is a type of card that allow, that you can play at any point of any time as long as you can afford the um, the cost at the top right there. Uh, you've also seen sorceries pop up a couple of times but you're almost ready to take on anyone including whoever roughed you up in the first place. For your last lesson, let's head to Tarkir to learn the art of surprise. We've also seen sorceries, which are like instants, but you can only cast them on your turn. We'll see some more of those shortly, I should imagine. Uh, Tarkir, that they just mentioned, is a plane based on the Mongolian steppe, which is quite interesting. Um, it's also a plane that tends to go back and forth um, in history. There were two sets that came out back to back that were spaced a thousand years apart. So we've seen green, red, blue. We should imagine that this is black now. Draw 
Dragon Hand Shadow. Watch her every move and be ready for anything. Opponent has spells that can be cast on your turn. Instance. Oh, what pretty little thing has wandered into my web? I was about to tell you there that when you're playing Magic the Gathering, you start with seven cards in your hand. Unfortunately, the opponent somehow had eight, and we had fewer. We could ignore that because it's just the tutorial. You can see here that they're playing black, they've got swamps, which is this little skull thing down here. Go on, attack me. Whatever is the opponent going to do? My part. Its mana here is untapped, as you can see, which means they can use it whenever they want. We cast at any time. Destroy target creature with power two or less, so that kills our cat. Don't let her get under your skin. Sad times. Um, so we'll cast our shrine keeper, which will end our turn, and then you'll see that these swamps will untap at the beginning of Dragon Hand Shadow's turn for them to use it again. You don't have to use your mana on your turn, just try and use all of your mana before your next turn, because otherwise what you don't use is left on the table as it were, it's a bit of a waste. Flash. Flash is basically creatures at instant speed. Cast them at any time you like, as long as you have the mana to do so. Nimble Pilferer. Yes, because I've done this tutorial before. Alright. Let's make our guy a little bit bigger. So now we have a 4-4. Four, four. Attack on him. Flashes out a nil nimble pilfer. Now that's interesting. Sacrifice. Oh, we don't even get a hit in. Sacrifice um, is something you can do to kill your own creatures. You can't sacrifice an opponent's creature, unfortunately, unless for some reason you have control of their creature. There are cards that allow you to take your opponent's creatures and bring them around to your side of the board, but you you mostly get those in red. Probably won't see very many of them in black. But you did well in this tutorial. We won't see any in black. Um, they're relatively rare. They mostly come up in red. So they cast their dude. They sacrifice to draw two cards, and then on their turn they cast Soul Hunter Rakshasha. Five mana, a five-five that can't block, which is good for us. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals five damage to target opponent. Unfortunately, we're on five life, so they can kill us with this next turn. We call that uh, presenting lethal. At the moment, we've only got a four-four against their six, so we don't have lethal against them. Careful! You can't afford to take another hit like that. Target blocking or block creature with targets plus two plus two. So because we can't kill them, but they can kill us, we're not going to attack. But we do have first. Then it's time for some the tactical advantage here. So, they attack with their 5-5, five five. we block with our 4-4 four four at the moment, this 5-5 five five will kill our 4-4, four four, but our 4-4 four four won't kill their 5-5. Five five. So, we'll say we're going to block here, hit block to confirm, before we pass to the damage step, we have the opportunity to cast our instance. You can't cast sorcery speed uh, cards right now. Um, just instance. Sorcery is during either of your two main steps here. So we'll cast this, make our guy a little bit bigger, turn him into a 6-6. Six, six. So now we kill their creature, and we don't die. Which is always good fun. Alright. Attack on him with our 4-4. Four, four. Alright. Huh. You've fallen right into my trap. So if they now double block, their two two ones can kill our four four. 
because they have a combined 2 plus 2, 4 power against our 4 toughness. And we would do 4 damage as we choose among the 1 here and the 1 here. But because our creature is now being blocked, we can make it bigger. Kill both of their creatures and not lose else. Which is important. I've got nothing, really. I'm at your mercy. You don't believe that. At the moment, they have six life and we have five life, which makes it look like the opponent is winning. But because we have stuff on the board and they don't, we're at the advantage. It's really hard to tell from a game of magic based on the life totals alone who's going to win. Um, games can swing back and forth quite quickly. Uh, it cast the spell only if a creature is attacking you. Create three 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. So let's attack on it. Looks like you've let your guard down. We're going to assume they're going to cast something with haste. Uh, they're going to fashion some stuff at the end of their turn. Excellent. So because they've cast this on their turn, they've passed the turn, they don't have summoning sickness anymore. Summoning sickness only applies Hurry, until the end of your, blockers. until the end of that turn. Sorry, until the beginning of your next turn. So if think of it like a clock. If you've got your turn, and then which way around are we going? Um, so you've got your turn, and then it comes back around their turn, to the beginning of your turn again. If they cast it on the end of your t at the end of your turn, and then they start their turn their creatures will lose summoning sickness. I hope I got the right way around the clock there. Uh, apologies if not, but back to the game. They're attacking. We can cast that because they've attacked us, because the card says cast the spell only if a creature is attacking you, which they are. We can chuck our three 1-1 one -one spirits in the way of each of those three. Don't take any damage. Why won't you die? Now you've got her. We don't need to do this, but we're feeling obnoxious, so we're gonna make our creature really massive. And hit the I'll opponent in the face with it. There we go, so four down. One to go. So we've seen our five colours now. White, blue, black, red, green. You would have hopefully seen there. On the back of that card, there were five little dots. Unfortunately, I can't flip these cards for you. But... Nice job! That was some quick thinking. Yay, we get more cards. When we first met, you looked within an inch of your life. But now you're unstoppable. Who were you fighting in the first place, anyway? We're about to find out. Nickel Bolas. <laughs> Nickel Bolas. After I annihilated you, I really didn't expect to see you again. Bolus is the big bad of magic, for the most part. Um, he's been around for a very, very long time in the magic world. Um, in terms of cards, he's been around for about 15 years. In terms of in-game storyline, aeons. Thousands of years. What? This is a he is a dragon idea. planeswalker. Um, There's no way you're prepared for this guy. There you go, you can see here white, blue, black, red, green. It's not gonna let me jump in, is it? Um I was trying to show you the back of the magic card, but we'll come back to that later. We can take on bowlers here. The chances are this is going to be a game against a blue, black, red deck. Stay hydrated. Um, I'll make a deal with you, Planeswalker. Defeat me, and I'll let you go. Lose, and you will serve me for eternity. Seems like a fair deal, doesn't it? Fight as if your life depended on it. Your deck can contain. Any cards you like within those five colours. Uh, the idea really is that you cast. You need to make a tough decision. Alright, so when you battlefield, each player discards a card. The opponent wants us to. Well, 
The game wants us to discard a plane, so discard a plane to shell. Did he just throw away a dragon? Yes, he did. I do as I choose with what is mine, and it is all mine. When he says throw away, discard, your cards go to what's called the graveyard. Um, Nickel Bolus is quite good at getting things out of the graveyard and bringing them back to the battlefield, which is quite annoying. Or if you're playing with the Nickel Bolus deck, really exciting. Everything here exists or perishes at my whim. Bolus kind of styles himself as a planeswalker dragon god. He's, as I say, the big bad of the game. Power is the only thing that matters. There, there is nothing else. It's a blue black red deck. Draw three cards and lose three life. That sounds like a terrible card because it does three damage to you. But the power of drawing cards is so game-winning that four mana, draw three cards, even at the cost of three life, is a brilliant, brilliant card. Don't, when you start playing, don't overlook cards like that. All right, send our guy in. He wants to block. We want to make our, our guy bigger. So we kill Kumamu in the process. There we go, in the bin. I will let nothing stand in the way of what I seek, not even death. That is true. In the story, Nickel Bolus has died multiple times. There we go, rise from the grave. Put a target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colours and types. So, he got back his, what would be a six mana, uh, six mana creature for four red red with just five mana using Rise from the Grave, which is pretty decent. You can see here that this is in gold. The reason for that goldness is just that it's a multicolored card. Um, it's a black card because this card has said uh, the creature is a black zombie in addition to its other types. It was previously red. You can see here the printed version of the card is red. But because of that effect, it's now a black, red, zombie dragon. You can see in blue there that that's, that's changed, just so you know what the, um, what's been added to the card. Alright, let's gain that four life back. Send in our 3-2 with the attack, and keep going. When you cast your next instant or sorcery, copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. Two damage to each creature without each creature. Yeah, each creature without flying. So does that twice, wipes our entire board. Strong card. Even stronger once it's doubled up. Alright. We have six mana. Inspiring commander. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Remember, drawing cards is, My triumph is incredible. Hand. Which is why this card here that draws you seven cards costs you seven mana. Um, it's drawing cards is what you want to be doing. So we play a card, it's power two or left. So we draw a card, gain a life, we're going to do it again. Gain life, draw a card. Just might be able to pull this off. And then we happen to have drawn Take Vengeance. So we can take vengeance on that volcanic dragon that has been nudging us in the face for the last three turns. No matter. Soon there will be nothing left of you either. Sure. But we're stabilizing. We have the advantage here. We've got our three creatures. The opponent now has one. I take that back entirely. The opponent has turned the tables. Chaos Mora is another brilliant card. And again, look at that artwork. That is phenomenal, isn't it? When it's battlefield, it was three damage to each other creature. That would have done three damage to any of his other creatures, but unfortunately he didn't have any. Um Hold back so you can prepare for his attack. We were going to, thank you. 
We won't attack into the 6-6, six, because six, that would be dumb. Alright. So he's attacking in for 10. That's quite a lot of damage. So we can cast... That you have. Um, Alright, we have multiple options here. Uh, you may need multiple creatures and cards to take down that dragon. It really wants us to take the dragon, doesn't it? Um, so let's put those two in front of the dragon, and then we can pump it up, pump up one of them by plus two, plus two. So it'll be one, two, three, four against the four. They'll both die, but that's not the end of the world. Question is, do we block the 6-6 six, six with one of our guys? Let's let's not take the 6. There we go. Congratulations. You're actually beginning to irritate me. Excellent. Irritating people is one of my favourite things to do to people. So, there we go. Play a card. Draw a card, gain a life. Play a card. Sarah Angel is another great card that's been hanging around for many, many years. An angel. It is an angel. Do you really think a mere angel will stop me? Angels tend to be my quite expensive. Is beyond that of a god. In terms of mana, but... They generally have flying and they have stuff like vigilance where attacking doesn't cause it to tap to go sideways. Which is really useful because it means they can attack and they can defend. This can't defend because it's tapped. That's a shame. But our 4 4 can fly over the top of all of their creatures. Chuck the cat under the bus. We don't need to cast the tax for advantage there. Admit defeat. We've come this far, don't give up now. Just make our thing even bigger. Um. Boom, right, so. Unless they can kill our angel or cast a flyer, we very much stand a good chance of winning here. Let's block there. This is it. We don't need to do this, but let's we gain, gain a little bit more life. Attack in with our seven seven and win the game. Ah, I'm impressed. Victory. <laughs> Woohoo! That dragon better think twice before he tries messing with you again. Alright, that is by and large the end of the tutorial. Um, winning the tutorial gains you these five decks for you to play with. The Angelic Army is the one that we've been playing with here, but you've got your mono blue, black, red, and green to play with. And you can see here the kind of cards that we've been playing with along the way. And that will bring you into the main game, which is played against other normal, real people like me, rather than Nickel Bulbous Dragon God and other computer-generated just computer players. Um, if you want to carry on playing against Navi, hit play and go to bot match. You can practice any deck that you want against that little blue dot. Or you can play with uh, other people through events and standard normal play. This will look quite complicated if you've not played any magic beyond the tutorial. But what you really want to start doing is hitting this play option. Um, 
every 24 hours you get a new quest which is like a mission to do for the day it'll be something along, along the lines of um, cast 30 green spells or cast 20 creatures play 30 lands that kind of thing as you do that you'll earn experience and gold your gold you use to take part in events um, although by and large yeah, you use your gold to take part in events. So if you were to... Let's have a look at this draft. You can see that it costs 5,000 gold to join one of the drafts, or 750 of these gem things. Gems are your premium currency in the game. We jump into the store, which will eventually load, hopefully. There we go. Um, Go to gems, you can see you can buy gems for real money. Um, this is the London Mulligan. I am based in London, England, but for some reason we're looking at these in euros. Um, I don't know what the prices are in US dollars, but have a look, you'll see what they are. I've been playing Arena for about two and a half, three years now, since it came out in the um, in Alpha. I was one of the Alpha and Beta testers of this. Over those two and a half, three years, I think I've spent a whopping five Great British Pounds, which um, is pretty good going. Hours and hours of play for a very, very nominal fee. And if we jump into the store, let's go back into here, you can see here you get a one-time deal of five cards and a bunch of gems. I did that, the five pound one. And... Um, Got a couple of card styles. These are like the shiny, shiny versions of the cards, and more gems than you would get paying normally. Um, there are events that are gem only, so don't use your gems unless you can avoid it. Uh, let's see if there are any. Doesn't look like there's going to be any gem only events at the moment. And this, when it says ticket entry, this is a special ticket that I got doing something a couple of weeks ago. But you can see here that the um, the events can be quite expensive in terms of gems. You can play with new cards before they come out in paper doing this, but that's generally 2,000 gems per event. And although I have thousands and thousands of gold, I don't have very many gems. Um, you can also use your gems for premium uh, card styles, that kind of thing. So if we have a look at one of my decks, just grab one of these at random. Just jump into this mono black deck that we're playing with here. Da, da, da. You can see here some of these have the art going to the borders. They're a bit... Um, what's the word? When they move, you can see the artwork moving behind it. You don't get that on the traditional uh, card styles, but these shiny versions. What is the word? Why am I blanking on it? Parallax. That's the word, parallax. It has this parallax effect going on in the background where if you were to hold the card up with the mouse, drag it around the screen, the image would move depending on where you put the mouse. You can. I don't want to hit craft, I want card styles. Card styles is what I want. So if I was to try and make my tendrils of corruption, which at the moment looks like this here with the border, I could do so for the paltry cost of 400 gems. But because you can use those gems for playing and events, it's not really worth it to buy the card styles unless you really, really want the card styles. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of what you want to do when you first start out playing. Play through the draft, the um, sorry, play through the tutorial. If you like the tutorial, play a couple of just normal play events until you have enough money for a draft, which will be five thousand gems, and then jump into one of these draft queues, either in events or. Yeah, it looks like they'll just be in the event section now. Um, other than that, if you don't want to draft, 
which is you take a pack of cards, you take one card out and you pass the pack to the person on your left. They will take that pack from you, take one card out, that's part of their deck. Pass that pack on. And if you don't want to do that style, you just want to get a bunch of cards together, cram them into one deck and play that deck. Uh, you can jump into, again, either the play queue or your standard traditional etc etc here. Um, Historic is a different kind of playstyle. I wouldn't worry about that until you've got a good good couple of games under your belt because the card pool for this is way, way larger than it is for standard. Brawl is a bit of a more casual format. Um, let's jump up here to the Brewer's Guild Hall. Brawl. This is a bit different in that unlike the 60 card decks that we were playing before, where you can have four copies of any given card in your deck. This is a singleton format, where you've got your 60 cards, but you've only got one copy of each card. You've also got a commander that has special rules attached to him. Really interesting way of playing, but probably not at a basic level just yet. So that's it for today. Go download the, uh, the game. It's entirely free to play. You don't have to spend any money on this if you don't want to. Play through the tutorial. If you have any questions or problems, you can watch back on this, but I'm sure you'll be fine. And by all means, ask away if you have any questions. Comments down below. Thanks, guys. I will talk to you another time.